Imagine yourself not being able to cry. This woman have these problems. She have a chronic systemic inflammatory autoimmune disease that can cause death if she gets pulmonary infection, a lymphoma, or just renal failure. So we said that this is an autoimmune disease. And in Sjögren syndrome, this means that the T and B lymphocytes of the immune system invades the exocrine glands in your body. Where can we find this exocrine glands? Lacrimal glands, for example, secrete tears. Salivary glands like the parotid, submandibular, and sublingual glands secrete saliva. So there are exocrine glands in many more places, like in the skin causing sweating, in the nose, respiratory tract, vagina, gastrointestinal tract, and many, many more. So eventually, this invasion leads to ductal epithelial cell hyperplasia, which causes a duct obstruction. Later, it leads to atrophy, fibrosis, and hyalinization of acne. So still later, there is atrophy and replacement with fat of the parenchyma. We can explain it with one word, destruction. So we mentioned that B lymphocytes are also infiltrating these glands, and these B lymphocytes can cause lymphoid follicles with germinal centers in the salivary glands. The lymphocytic infiltrate can be so intense that it looks like a lymphoma. In fact, these patients are about 40 times more likely to develop B-cell non-Hodgkin lymphomas. So in conclusion, we know that there is exocrine gland destruction in Sjögren syndrome. So this picture now shows the most common symptoms and organs affected in this disease. Here we see a middle-aged woman, because females are affected more than males, and usually these females are what? Middle-aged. We can see alopecia, which means hair loss. We can see dry skin, dry eyes, dry nose that can cause diminished smell, dry mouth, dry respiratory tract that can cause cough, and dry vagina. So the dry skin can be treated with some lubricants. The dry vagina can cause dyspareunia, which is a painful sexual intercourse. This can also be help, helped with some lubricants. The dry eyes, also called keratoconjunctivitis sicca, for more than three months, is an important sign for Sjögren syndrome. The patient is usually complaining about bad vision, photosensitivity, and irritation of the cornea. So which exocrine glands are destroyed in the dry eyes? It's the lacrimal glands. How do I know that the dry eyes are because of Sjögren syndrome? I mean, is there any other disease that can cause dry eyes? And yes, for example, there can be inflammation because of Steven Johnson syndrome, the pemphigoid, chronic conjunctivitis, chronic blepharitis. So there are many types of diseases. And it can be a simple trauma to the eye or, or a blink problem. It can also be caused by hypovitaminosis A, which is a deficiency in vitamin A. There can be neurologic problems so that the eyelids or lacrimal glands are not functioning as they should. Even drugs can cause dry eyes, example the anticholinergic, diuretics, antihistamines, or antidepressants. So as you understand, we have to do more tests to make a differential diagnosis. The symptoms by themselves are not enough to say that this is Sjögren syndrome. We can do the Schirmer's test. We put a filter paper strip under each lower eyelid and measure the quantity of tears secreted in five minutes. A young normal person moistens more than 50 millimeter of each paper strip, whereas in Sjögren syndrome it's less than 5 mm. Why did I say young normal person? It's because we have to remember that with aging, naturally the eyes become more dry and therefore older persons sometimes moisten less than 50 mm. Another test of dry eyes could be to use slit lamp. This test is called tear film breakup time. And we stain the cornea with eye drop dyes like the fluorescein or lysamine green or rose bengal. Then we ask the patient to blink and we measure the time required for the dry spot to appear on the cornea surface after blinking. Dry spots occur about 10 seconds after blinking in normal persons and after 10 seconds an urge to blink again is triggered. But when the tear film breakup time is less than the blink rate, so less than 10 seconds, the symptoms of dry eyes appear. And the treatment for this dry eyes can be avoiding drugs that cause dryness, for example, the anticholinergic, diuretics, antihistamines, and antidepressants. We can use artificial tears or lubricant drops like the methyl cellulose or hypromellose. We can stimulate lubrication of the eyes locally with cyclic AMP or 2% olive solution or we can stimulate systemic 
play with the pilocarpin or sevi melon. In severe cases, we can put tiny plaques placed in the tear drainage ducts, or it can go so far that we have to make a corneal transplantation. The dry mouth, or also called xerostomy of more than three months, is also an important sign of Sjögren syndrome. And this patient is saying that she have daily dry mouth with difficulty of chewing, swallowing, and even the taste of food is not as good as before. So which exocrine glands are destroyed here? It's the salivary glands, that like the parotid, the submandibular, the sublingual, and minor salivary glands. The treatment for dryness of mouth is to drink water daily to help swallowing, for example. We can stimulate the salivary glands locally by sugar-free gum, lozenges, or mouthwash containing carboxymethylcellulose. We can also stimulate salivary glands systemically with drugs like pilocarpin or sevimelin, as I mentioned before. We can avoid drugs that decrease the salivary gland secretion, like the anticholinergic antidepressants or antihistamines. The patient also has tooth decay, which can be prevented by regular dental visits with topical fluoride application, or simply by keeping a good oral hygiene after each meal. She is complaining of secondary candida infection. In this case, we give topical nystatin or lozenges or clotrimazole. Stones can appear in the salivary duct, which have to be removed to preserve the salivary tissue. So I ask the same thing here as I did for the eye. Is there any other disease or cause of dry mouth? Yes, there can be viral infections. Drugs like antihistamines, anticholinergic, antidepressants, antihypertensive, all these, as I mentioned, psychological factors, irradiation, diabetes mellitus, or just trauma. What test do we need for dry mouth? We can measure the saliva production, which will be low in Sjögren syndrome, meaning less than 1.5 milliliter in 15 minutes. We can also use techniques like salivary synthesis scanning or cialography. Except dryness, the patient may present with enlarged parotid glands, which are smooth, firm, and rarely painful, unless there is an obstruction or an infection. So if the parotid glands are persistently firm, we need to rule out the lymphoma. If it's painful with infection, we need to apply local wet heat compressors, antibiotics, and analgesics. So we have to think of any other diseases that can cause enlarged parotid glands, meaning we make a differ differential diagnosis again. So enlarged parotid glands can be caused by what? Viral infections like mumps, influenza, Epstein-Barr, Coxsackie virus A, cytomegalovirus, and even HIV. It can be caused by amyloidosis, sarcoidosis, metabolic problems like diabetes mellitus, hyperlipoproteinemia, chronic pancreatitis, hepatic cirrhosis. So even endocrine problems like the acromegaly and gonadal hypofunction can cause enlarged parotid glands. Until now, we have only looked at the exocrine gland problems, but there are also extra glandular symptoms. And I will mention them in decreasing order. So the most common is arthalgias and arthritis. We treat it with hydroxychloroquine or methotrexate and prednisolone. Raynaud's phenomenon can be seen and is treated with nifedipine and gloves, which protect from cold. Lymphadenopathy is the, on the cervical or axillary region can be seen. Vasculitis can present itself as rashes on the skin called purpuras, which can be treated with, with glucocorticoids or immunosuppressive agents like the ciprofosfamine. Kidney diseases like interstitial nephritis, kidney stones, impaired concentrating ability, or just renal tubular acidosis. The B-carbonate replacement therapy can be used for the renal tubular acidosis. Chronic hepatobiliary disease. Risks of non-Hodgkin lymphomas can be, as I said, 40 times higher here. And this can be treated with the anti-CD20 therapy together with the CHOP regimen, which is a chemotherapy regimen consisting of cyclophosphamide, hydroxy, daunorubicin, oncovin, and prednisolone. So rarely splenomegaly or myositis may be seen. So until now, we have talked a lot about symptoms, but in order to be sure that this is Sjögren syndrome, we need to perform some laboratory tests. And if we make blood tests, we can see leukopenia, anemia, an increased erythrocyte sedimentation rate, and some autoantibodies. The autoantibodies are rheumatoid factors and anti-nuclear antibodies called the SSA rho and SSB la. Okay, except blood tests, we can confirm that this is Sjögren syndrome by taking a biopsy from the lip, or more specifically, from the minor salivary glands in the buccal mucosa. 
So this will show in the microscope that lymphocytes have attacked the salivary glands and there will be many large areas of lymphocytes with the atrophy of the tissue. Genetic tests can show an association of Sjögren syndrome with HLA-DR3. And now we have reached our final part. We need to tell if this woman have a primary or a secondary Sjögren syndrome. So the primary means that she only have Sjögren syndrome with no other associated disease. Secondary means that she have Sjögren syndrome secondarily to another disease. The most common associated disease is rheumatoid arthritis. And there can be many other associated diseases too, like systemic lupus erythematosus, systemic sclerosis, mixed connective tissue disease, vasculitis, Hashimoto thyroiditis, polymyositis, primary biliary cirrhosis, and chronic autoimmune hepatitis.